No, I'm a state certified driving instructor. I teach teens and adults. Let's go ahead and get into these elements to help you understand why don't adults and teens. You know, life is full of difficult times. Little do you believe it's traffic jams. Traffic jams are part of any type of driving process. When I teach driver's ed at certain times of the day, we're stuck in traffic. I'm not talking about like downtown Los Angeles, downtown New York, downtown Chicago or downtown Detroit, but just traffic jams where you're sitting three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. Literally, I can look across and see a vein popping out of my student's neck and seeing them starting to sweat. So those traffic jams create heart palpitations and that's a very dangerous situation. Next, aggressive drivers. I see this a lot more with drivers, people who are in a hurry to get to work, a hurry to get home, a hurry to get to the store. They will cut you off, they will flash their lights, and they will tailgate you. So that is another reason why adults and teens don't want to drive because we just have so many aggressive drivers out here. Next, fear of accidents. I've been in accidents before with student drivers, with adults as well as teens. Uh, my job is to be a defensive driver. A student driver and a driver as instructor should never be speeding. We should never put ourselves, the client, and the equipment in danger. That is the most important thing, is that having that ability to be a defensive driver. But if you can't even get out there and drive, you're never going to experience that. So we have a group of 17, 21 year olds, 24 year olds, 27 year olds, 30 year olds who have so much anxiety, so much fear, they don't want to drive at all. And I see that more and more because we live in a society today where you have to have transportation. Bad weather conditions. I had an opportunity to drive a client yesterday. It was a lot of black ice, a lot of snow. My client was squeezing the wheel so hard. I wanted to tell them to relax. But when a client hits that point, P-O-I-N-T, they can't come back down. So my job is to try to help them relax, relax and feel comfortable. But the driving environment will trigger those anxiety flights. And you have to separate yourself from that type of environment where your car is literally sliding off the road. You're trying to turn the wheel the opposite way and there's a fight or flight where you know you could crash, roll your car over in the ditch, and I've been in the ditch about four times because drivers panic. They slam the brake, they overturn the wheel, and they overcorrect, and they upset the balance of the car. So what am I trying to tell you? You need to go into those turns and curves smoothly. Uh, road construction. This year, we had a construction worker killed because drivers were careless, not paying attention. Our construction workers across the United States and across the world, they're there to make our roads better for us. The least thing we can do as a general public is drive a defensive mindset. So when you have people who've been in trauma who have been in crashes, they don't want anything to do with driving. I remember a client this past summer, literally squeezing the wheel so hard, sweat coming from her hands. She was sobbing and I felt so bad for her because she just couldn't exhale and relax. People go through this type of trauma and we can't ignore it. It is real out here. Next, fear of getting lost. That will paralyze you and you won't wanna go out and drive. You won't wanna go out into the driving environment because you don't know where you're going. 
as a child, we all remember getting lost and the fear that comes over you, calling out to your mom and dad, but they're nowhere, you're around strangers. Imagine a late teen, a mid 20, they are adults out here that have such sheltered lives. They are not used to acting and interacting with the environment. So what does this mean to us as uh, general public drivers? We need to be more sympathetic. We need to be more supportive and we need to be more kind because that driver who's driving five under, seven under, and I know what you're gonna say, they're dangerous. They're holding up the flow of the traffic and they are because I've been in the car with adults who are 20s, 30s, 40s, who are panicked. They are scared to drive. So you have to give them the support. And that's what a lot of motorists don't understand because you are in your own selfish perspective trying to get home, trying to get to school, trying to get to work. And I understand that we all have a place to go. Mechanical issues. Until you have a breakdown, you have no idea what I'm saying. I've had blowouts before, a tire blows out. I've had a car shut down because of a fuel issue. I've had a car shut down because we flashed the computer to a different tune to make the transmission shift more and to add more power, but one of the tables was left turned off. We were out and the vehicle shut down. We lost power. If you're in the fast lane and then your vehicle just shuts down and you go from 70 to 64 to 60 to 59, you have no idea how that feels because we had a mechanical error. And until you have that, you are riding free. You have no idea. And when a breakdown happens, you can panic and there's no one there. Your mom is not there. Your dad's not there. Your mechanic is not there. It's you and your vehicle. And you better know how to fix it. And you better dress for the elements. If this uh, winter day, you better have something on to keep your head warm, a vest, pants. You can't go out in some flip flops and some shorts. You will not survive. Reckless drivers, people are reckless for various reasons something at work, their relationship at home is not working. They take it out on people like you and I, we're following the law, 